May 15th, 2001, starts off like any other day at CSX's Stanley Yard, located just south of Toledo, Ohio. This yard crew has been on duty since 6.30 a.m., shuffling freight cars going to local industries or far-flung destinations. It's almost noon when the crew is briefed on their next assignment. Take this cut of 47 cars from the classification yard to the departure yard, so space can be cleared up for more cars to be sorted out. The crew goes on duty with number 8888, a former Conrail SD40-2. The movement is routine, except for a little problem. A switch is lined the wrong way, and it looks like this yard move won't be able to stop in time with the wet rails and cars pushing against the lone engine. The engineer makes his decision. First, he applies the independent brake for the engine. Then, he applies 20 pounds of air to the automatic brake, which normally applies the brakes for the entire train. As with most yard movements, the air hoses between the locomotive and freight cars are unattached, so all the additional force will do is further hasten the stop. What happens next is where everything changes. The engineer goes to apply the dynamic brakes, which subtracts electricity from the traction motors and dissipates the kinetic energy as heat. When he thinks the dynamics are engaged, he hops off at 8 miles per hour. He lines the switch just in time, but when he tries to climb back on, he loses his footing on the wet handrails. At 12 miles per hour, the engineer is dragged along the ground before finally losing his grip. The cruise conductor and brakeman are under the impression that he had a heart attack. Using his own car, the brakeman and another employee race to the nearest grade crossing to try and hop on board. By then, their train is moving at 18 miles per hour, way too fast for someone to jump on safely. The word is spread to local authorities. 8888 is running away. Police is already present in the area to monitor a special charter train promoting grade crossing safety. They block off grade crossings and keep bystanders at a safe distance. The runaway is now romping down the old Toledo branch at 45 miles per hour. It's not exactly blistering, but there's no one on board to work the headlights, horn, and bell. Of the Consist 22 loaded cars, only two are loaded with hazardous molten phenol. The train itself is the biggest threat, and all measures must be taken to neutralize it. Just north of Galaxy, a maintainer has placed his portable derailleur on the track. Its purpose is to literally push the rails out of the gauge and send the whole train onto the ground, at a location far away from civilians. It turns out that the railers are only effective at slow speeds. Just north of Dunkirk, a shot is fired. The sheriff takes aim at the engine's emergency fuel cutoff button in an attempt to shut down the engine. Not only did he miss, the button has to be held down in order for it to start fuel to the prime mover. More derailing attempts are set at locations down the line to prevent the train from reaching Columbus and risk causing a catastrophe. Reprieve is at hand, though, for traveling north on the same track is train Q636, which is promptly put into the siding at Dunkirk. The dispatcher orders for the crew to uncouple their lead locomotive and give chase. By the time they reach Kenton, Q636 makes contact at 51 miles per hour. Applying the dynamic brakes, the runaway speed is reined in through the tight curves through town. At the Route 31 grade crossing, they're brought down to 11 miles per hour. A CSX trainmaster runs alongside, pulls himself aboard, and shuts off power. 8888 finally relents, with its brake shoes grinded away. The, 
The investigation revealed human error as the cause of the incident. As it turned out, the engineer was used to operating with a control stand with a combined throttle and dynamic brake function. Some control stands had the throttle and dynamic brakes as separate levers, whereas this unit had them consolidated into one, with a selector that changed between dynamics and throttle. By operating under the assumption of the dynamic brakes being engaged, the engineer was sure that the extra force would bring the train to a stop, but it was by having the throttle at run 8 that empowered 8888 to get away. When the newly christened Crazy 8 was released back into service, the control stand was changed to this simpler arrangement. The unit would serve CSX for seven more years, until a prime mover failure pulled it out of service. It has since been rebuilt into a next generation SD40-3. It was an interesting incident, but fortunately one without fatalities, injuries, or even that much collateral damage. And yet, something else that the story would leave behind was a legacy. This event was in early 2001, with the increase in reality TV would showcase incredible footage shot by news crews or casual videographers for entertainment. The story of Crazy 8 didn't take long to become a center of fascination for a wider demographic than just rail enthusiasts. Nine years later, the events of what happened on May 15th would serve as the basis for director Tony Scott's final movie, Unstoppable. Although heavily dramatized and embellished, as is the norm for the action film genre, all the keynote actions taken during the event played a role in the movie from start to finish. In fact, the engineer on SD40-2-8392, which tacked itself onto the back of Crazy 8 to slow it down, got to serve as a technical advisor for the film's production. As for the audience perception, let's just say that opinions vary from person to person. The federal government's investigation ruled this type of incident as unlikely to happen again, it becomes even less probable with new technologies on the rise like Trip Optimizer and the ever-controversial positive train control. Yet, it's easy to forget how derailments, employee mismanagement, and pitfalls in minimizing its operating ratio are all liable to happen on other railroads throughout the world. Each time, railroads like CSX have picked themselves up and put their best horsepower forward to keep freight moving. They demonstrate their commitment to give back to communities beyond their rails, and have even shown willingness to show off their corporate heritage in the limelight. The path that every major railroad has followed, in the US or elsewhere, hasn't always been the smoothest, but it is one that is continually being improved on.